do warping, we're going to use the morph node. So I have my footage and let's just place the morph node in the tree. And if we take a look at our object list, you'll see that we have a lot of the familiar tools that we have from the roto node, including the spline creation tools and motion tracking. Plus we have this little one here, which is our correspondence tool, which we're going to look at in just a moment. Now, when we're doing warping, we need three basic things. We need a source shape, so where we're warping from. We need a target shape, so where we're warping to. And we need a correspondence between those two, so Silhouette knows what bit of the source is going to what bit of the target. And let's do that right now. And I'm going to come in and we're going to do something with the mouth here. And I'm going to just create a little shape that goes around the mouth. There we go, nothing too special. And let's just call this one mouth source. So now we have our source, we need the target. So what I'm gonna do is just duplicate this up with control or command D and just make a duplicate copy of that. And I will call this one mouth target. Lovely. And then I can just use the transform tool just to make this a slightly different shape. And even the reshape tool as well, just to fatten that out a little bit. There we go. So we start, start to make a little bit of a, uh, a kissy mouth going on here. Excellent. So now we have our source, we have our target. The next thing we need to do is to tell Silhouette how we're going to connect those two. Now many warping filters use point-to-point -point correspondence. That is to say you need the exact same number of points between the two shapes and it will match those two points up. Silhouette doesn't do that. Silhouette has this correspondence tool. So we're going to take it from our source and we're going to drag it over onto our target. And these li yellow lines here are going to show us the movement between our source to our target. Now we have this messed up over like this. We can see this is going to give us a slightly weird result because this bit of the mouth down here is going to move up and around. And that's not really what we want. And if we have a more complex shape, we can add multiple correspondent shapes by alt clicking. And we can fine tune that correspondence up a little bit more. And we have finer lines going down here so that the density is slightly higher as well. And do that a few times. We don't need to worry about that right now because that's quite a simple shape. Okay, let's just hide our tool overlay for a second. Okay, so we've got our source, we've got our target, we've got our correspondence. Now we need to animate between the two. And if I go into the node parameters, I have my distortion here. And if I turn that up, you can see that's now warping between my source and my target. So if your view update is set to drag and you're getting a slower feedback than you expect, which can happen if we have a more complex warp going on at high precision rates, you might want to set the update to one of the others such as release or manual. I'll stick with drag just for now though. Okay, so if we look at the full shape, we can see we're getting our warp going on, but it's looking a little bit weird. It's taking our source and warping it to the target. And we can be absolutely sure that our source shape is always going to hit the target shape. What happens around it is another matter. And that's where adding barriers can help. Because at the moment, we've got warping going on around the entire image. If I add another shape now, let's just add an, another shape around about here. Let's just bring that in a little bit. And I'm not gonna connect this to anything. I'm gonna call this one mouth barrier. And let's see now what happens as I distort around. Well, now you can see that the entire warp is going on within our barrier here. If I look at my mouth barrier shape, you can see the barrier strength is set to 100, which means that there is no warping going on outside of this area here. 
if I set my barrier strength down a little bit, you can see it brings in more of the other image. So I'm going to leave that at 100. And of course, this is animatable. So I can come in and set a keyframe at the start, set one close to the middle at 100, and come back around about here and play that through. And that will animate up. Now here I've used closed shapes. I don't have to use closed shapes at all. If I wanted the mouth to open a little bit, well, there's a couple of things I could have done. One would have been to make two shapes, one for the top lip and one for the bottom lip. Another thing I can do is use open shapes to open up specific areas. So let's come over here and add another shape. And I'm going to use this to go around the edge of the top lip. So the bottom edge of the top lip. And I'll call this one top lip. And that's an open shape. So let's duplicate this up. Hit T to go into transform. And we'll transform this a little bit here as well. Hit R to go into reshape. And I'm just going to open this up a tiny bit. Have a little bit more open in the middle. There we go. So this is top lip source. Now I have top lip target. So now I've set my source and my target. What do I have to do? Yep, set a correspondence point between my source and my target. Lovely. And let's do the same for the bottom lip as well. Let's just lock these up. So come in, draw one more spline here for the bottom lip. And bottom lip source, duplicate it, Apple or Control. So Control or Command D and bottom lip target. Let's transform that up again. T to go into transform, bring that down, round about there. R to go into reshape, move that there a little bit. Let's see what that's going to do. OK, so now we've got our source, our target. What do we need? Yep, correspondence point. Thank you very much. Boom. And that's looking all right. Let's now turn our overlays off. Play that back, see what happens. We've got a little bit too much of a gap going on there. We can see we really are hitting that point to point. So our source and our target really is matching up. So let's just bring that in a little bit there and come in and unlock the top lip target as well. Bring it in around about there. So we can see we do get some good real time feedback on this shape. Play that through. Yes. Lovely. And because we've added keyframes now, if we have a look in our timeline and go down to the distortion, we can also look at these keyframes as a curve. Whether I'm in the curve editor or on the timeline, I can always right click on any keyframe and just change the interpolation or select all keys and change that to ease in and out. And I can adjust that just by clicking directly on the Curve Editor. And let's turn the Curve Editor off for now. One other thing we can do when we're in the Morph node, using it either for warping or morphing, is we can move objects independently of each other. We don't have to use the overall node distortion to do our work for us. And let's see what I mean. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to do something on our nose. And I'm very quickly draw a rough shape around the nose. Another open shape, if you'll notice. There we go. And I will call this one nose source. Duplicate it up. Call it nose target. Transform it. Make it a little bit skinnier. Actually, quite a lot skinnier. There we go. So we've got our source. We've got our target. Set our correspondence points. There we go. Lovely. 
and let's see what happens now. If I turn off the overlays, let's see what happens now if we play that back. Okay, well, instead of doing just a kissy mouth, we're also doing a weird kissy nose as well. I don't want that. I want the nose to always be warped up. Can we do that? Yes, of course we can. If I come into my nose source now, have a little look down in the object parameters. Here I can see that we have a control for distortion and transparency, but these are currently grayed out and I can't change them. And the reason for that is that we're using the overall node distortion and transparency to control this warp. If I come over to the override button over on the right hand side, this control now lights up for us and I can now use our distortion independently on the nose. So I can find a place where I like it, right about there. And if I press play now, you can see the nose stay static because the controls are being overridden on a shape by shape basis, whilst the rest of the warp does its thing. One last thing I want to say before we leave our warp overview is just to talk a little bit about precision. Now, I said that the source and the target shapes will always match up. They will always hit their mark. But what happens around the rest of the edge? Well, this is controlled by a couple of different things. If I unlock my mouth source and target for a second and turn on the overlays, if I bring up my edge density, you can see we're getting more and more correspondence points happening around here. If I turn off the overlays, you can see that updating as I scrub through, just check out what happens around the edges here. So this is making this edge a little bit more dense so that there's more point to point matching going on. Let's reset that one more time. And the other way we can start to control and influence what happens with the warp itself is using this precision. Let's come over here where it's at its apex and come into the node parameters and take a look at the precision here. We currently have this set to draft. If I bring this up to normal, you can see that things start looking a little bit different. And if I bring this to better, we get another slightly tighter look. But this is only, again, this is only affecting the stuff around the edges. It's not affecting where we've drawn our actual shape because the links between the source and the target will always marry up perfectly. So the only difference you're going to get around between, between changing the precision is what's happening around the rest of the image. So you can see here in the corner of the mouth, changing that from draft to normal to better gives us a slightly different result. If I press play on that, it's a lot harder to compute the precision when it's at better or normal, but once it's cached in, we get our real time playback. So we'll look at our before and our after, before and our after. And that is a brief overview of how we use the morph node to do warping.